Welcome to the Clutch Kitten Gaming Podcast, where I play an indie game for five hours and let you know whether or not it's worth your time and money. Hello and welcome everyone, this is James, also known as Clutch Kitten, and I'm so glad that you're here for episode 62 of the show. I'm not sure about how you fared on Black Friday and Cyber Monday, but thankfully, I survived those two days without spending more than $30. The crazy thing is, I ended up buying Skyrim of all games. Yeah, it's 2019 and I'm buying Skyrim for what feels like the 20th time. It was a real struggle because... My wife and I have wanted that game for Switch for a while now, but I haven't been able to bring myself to spend $60 on a game that seems to be sold for $10 or less on Steam at least every few months. I ended up giving in to the $30 sale on Switch, but man, that still felt bad. Luckily for us, we have more to talk about apart from my annoyance with Skyrim's Switch price. Before we get into a small bit of news, and inevitably this week's game, I want to quickly mention podcast reviews. Whether this is your second time listening or you've been around since the beginning, if you enjoy the show, I want to encourage you to head on over to Apple Podcasts to give it a five-star review. It may seem like a throwaway request, but the reviews really help when it comes to visibility on that platform, plus they only take a minute or so to do. In the news this week, Nintendo is finally adding more games to their NES and SNES Switch Online collection. It's a small grouping, but I still think they're worth mentioning. To NES Online, they're bringing Journey of Silius and Crystalis, and for SNES Online, they're bringing Star Fox 2, Super Punch-Out, Kirby Superstar, and Breath of Fire 2. Those games will show up on December 12th if you subscribe to Switch Online, and hopefully, Nintendo will bring even more games to those services sooner than later. Let's move on now to this week's game. Today we're going to be talking about Wargroove, which is a turn-based strategy game heavily inspired by Advanced Wars and developed by Chucklefish. If you're like me, the name Chucklefish might be most familiar because of Stardew Valley. Their logo pops up every time you start playing that game, but it's because they helped with the publishing rather than the actual development. Chucklefish was founded in 2011 and currently resides in London, and apart from Wargroove, the only other game they've developed is Starbound, which came out in 2016. Wargroove was released earlier this year on February 1st and is currently available on PC, Switch, PS4, and Xbox One for $19.99. According to HowLongToBeat.com, the main story takes around 20 hours to beat, but if you're a completionist, you can more than double that time if you so desire. In terms of controls, as it's a turn-based game without a million buttons that you need to bind to keys, both gamepad and mouse and keyboard should work great for you. Let's move on now to the narrative. It's crazy. One moment I was out in the fields enjoying a beautiful day of training, and the next, I was informed that my father, the king, was assassinated and my nation was at war. I definitely wasn't prepared to lead as queen so soon or have the peace of the nations rest on my shoulders. Thankfully, this journey has proven to be more of an adventure than I originally thought. With the help of Emmerich, Caesar, and the allies and friends I've made along the way, the light at the end of the tunnel is growing brighter. Wargroove is set in the fantasy world of Arania, and although the narrative begins with Mercia becoming queen of Cherrystone, the story follows a whole cast of characters from four main kingdoms. When it comes to the depth of Wargroove's plot, there isn't a whole lot to be had, although it isn't necessarily something to criticize about the game. The dialogue and short cutscenes are there to provide some light character development and to set the tone of the experience 
as opposed to providing a complex storyline. I didn't go into this game expecting an incredible narrative, so I was actually pleasantly surprised by how much character the writing had. It was witty, cute, funny, and it didn't take itself too seriously. Even though the story contains themes of betrayal, death, and war, which are all inherently pretty dark topics, the writing in tandem with the art and sound design uplifted the feel of the experience. When it comes to the character development specifically, I think Chucklefish did a fine job of making all the heroes feel unique. Again, the narrative and lore isn't deep, but the cutscenes, hero abilities, and small bits of VO helped to give personality to each of the commanders. Let's move on now to the heart of the game, the gameplay. Whether you're a turn-based strategy veteran, or this is your first crack at the genre, the core mechanics of Wargroove are pretty straightforward. Battles play out on top-down, grid-based maps, and unlike some other strategy games like Fire Emblem Three Houses and XCOM 2, you typically start levels with only one commander and a couple basic units. In order to push forward and defeat the enemy, you have to conquer towns so that you can build up a gold generating engine which allows you to recruit additional disposable units. This basic game structure ended up creating an experience that felt much more RTS-y than I expected, but let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Let's touch on a few strengths and weaknesses of the gameplay. Our first strength comes in the form of unit placement mechanics. I know that sounds incredibly boring, but the way it impacts gameplay is super important. Whether you're aware of it or not, many games implement a critical chance stat. The way it works is that every time you attack an enemy, you have a certain percentage chance to significantly boost or sometimes double your damage. The crit stat is often put into games because it provides a fun form of RNG. It makes it so every attack you perform has a chance, even if it's just a small chance, to do loads of damage and put you in a more favorable position. Although crit percentages can be a lot of fun, they also aren't as predictable. That's why the developers over at Chucklefish opted into a more skill-based crit system. Instead of rolling a digital dice every time you make an attack, crits are based on unit placement. For example, if you attack with a spearman who is alone, he's always going to perform a basic attack. However, if he's standing next to an ally spearman, he's always going to critically strike. Each unit has a similar condition that needs to be met in order to crit, which makes placement critical to your success in this game. Wargroove definitely isn't the first turn-based strategy game to use placement-based mechanics, but I found the emphasis on placement to be a really fun change. Wargroove's second strength of gameplay is in the tension it creates in combat. When you enter a match, you're not going in with a team of overpowered or overleveled characters. Apart from your commander, all your units are disposable fighters which are no different than the enemy fighters. Because of that, encounters are tough and also pretty damn fair. There are some downsides to the fairness that we'll get into in a moment, but when it comes to making combat encounters that feel weighty, I think the designers hit it out of the park. The third strength of gameplay is... Well, honestly, I'm having a hard time thinking of one because as much as I wanted to love Wargroove's combat, I struggled more and more as the game went on. Let's get into the why. The most simple way I can put this is that encounters start to become a slog to get through. The first reason why is that there's a lack of in-mission progression. Your commander isn't leveling up, your units aren't getting stronger, and your buildings aren't improving. Apart from a single groove ability that's unlocked by your commander after engaging in enough combat, what you see is what you get when it comes to your army. Being able to create advantages for yourself is almost entirely reliant on your unit placement as well as your ability to spawn the correct units. This leads into the negative side of fairness. Sometimes it's just not fun. Clearly there's a place for difficult games, 
but if that difficulty is developed through unit homogenization across factions and a lack of any sort of chance, the game starts to feel like chess. Now, I know someone is out there, definitely not you, of course, but someone is out there who is being a smug asshole and saying, well, chess is fun. Let me share a quick anecdote. When I was in second grade, my mother lovingly signed my brother and I up for chess club. Yes, if you're asking, I was cool. Now, apart from the fact that I was in a chess club, you know what I remember most from that entire blip in my life? I remember playing soccer outside after I was eliminated from a tournament, and I remember watching some kid play Pokemon on his Game Boy. Why? Because although chess is an incredibly balanced and intellectual game, for most people, it's boring as hell to play. Wargroove is not chess, but the slow pace and fairness of it started giving me that feeling. When I started playing Wargroove, I actually enjoyed the gameplay. Having a fair and difficult game like this can be okay, but what caused me to go from enjoying the experience to not wanting to play at all was how punishing misplays are. You can literally get 40 minutes into a battle, and if you move a single character one space in the wrong direction, you might lose and have to start the whole encounter over. After having to restart three missions, I finally bumped the difficulty down, but my frustration had already been festering too long. To summarize my waterfall of complaints, it's important to note that none of the elements on their own are necessarily bad. It's when they're put together that the experience starts to go downhill. The pace of this game is just too slow to have such punishing battles that are won through attrition. There are definitely aspects of the gameplay to praise, but overall, the feel just wasn't quite right. Now that we've discussed the narrative and gameplay, let's talk about the art and sound design. Wargroove excels in both of these areas. When it comes to the visuals, this game is bright and colorful, and the pixel graphics have some of the cutest animations. Although the unit classes are the same across all the factions, the look of the units are unique. For example, when you play Cherry Stone, the dog units look exactly how you'd imagine. But the dog equivalent in the Florin faction is much more like a little green monster. The visual distinctions were confusing at times, but the style was still wonderful. The game's soundtrack is also solid. Just like with the narrative, the orchestral tracks are mostly uplifting and happy. When you pair that with the colorful pixel art, it presents a very cohesive feel to the design. When it comes to the voiceover, it's one of those games where instead of full lines of dialogue, only short words or sounds are recorded. I think this type of VO was a smart choice for Wargroove because it conveyed the essence of a character without extending the length of cutscenes. Now that we've talked about the narrative, gameplay, art and sound design, let's summarize with some positives and negatives. First off on the positive side, I think the overall tone and humor of the writing is endearing. The cutscenes don't overstay their welcome, the plot isn't needlessly complex, and the characters are imbued with enough personality to make them interesting. Second, I appreciate the emphasis on unit placement in gameplay. It helps to make units feel very different from one another and adds a layer of strategy that's easy to grasp yet difficult to execute on. Third, the artistic elements of visuals and sound are incredibly well done. As I mentioned already, Wargroove is cohesive in terms of how it feels to play. Fourth, I haven't talked much about this, but Wargroove's additional game modes provide fun and more customizable ways to play the game. My review is based on the campaign, but the fact that those other modes are available is definitely a boon for the overall package. The first and primary weakness of Wargroove has to do with the tedium of gameplay. There are a lot of great ideas at play, but the way they fit together isn't quite right. Second, this is incredibly nitpicky and doesn't matter all that much in the grand scheme of things, but seeing an enemy's movement and attack range is surprisingly difficult. For a genre of game that relies heavily on knowing that kind of information, issues like this can become annoying very quickly. Third, 
Although the visual distinction of units fits thematically, it doesn't lend well to clarity on the battlefield. We've made it now to the final boss. This is the part of the podcast where I let you know whether you should slay the game and buy it, flee the game and avoid it, or farm up and wait for a sale. My verdict for Wargroove is to farm up and wait for a sale. I know I railed on quite a few gameplay aspects, but in the end, this game is still really well put together. The flaws keep it from being a must-buy, but it's definitely not a title to ignore. If you have nostalgia for Advance Wars, this is a solid game to pick up, but if that's not you, I'd recommend waiting for a discount, lowering the difficulty immediately after starting the game, and then playing the arcade mode whenever you find yourself getting frustrated with a mission. As always, thank you all so much for taking the time to listen in. If you enjoyed what you heard, or even completely disagree with my opinions, make sure you DM me on Instagram at clutchkittengaming, or email me at clutchkittengaming at gmail.com. I hope you have a lovely rest of the day, and I'll see you in-game.